It's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and welcome to Cocktails with the Queens. I'm back with my girls, Vivica A. Fox, Lisa Ray, and Selena Johnson. We're going to dish about everything that's trending on social media and the news. And later in the show, you don't want to miss it. We're talking all things mental health and music with Grammy award-winning artist Michelle Williams and Macy Gray. So we got a packed show for y'all tonight. What's up, Queens? How's everybody's weekend? How's everybody doing? Everybody looks beautiful as usual. (laughs) <laughs> you know us, we always busy traveling and working. I was actually in Miami this weekend mm-hmm. doing another sequel, uh, Secret Society 3. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah, so that was really, really fun, full of fashion, and a lot of heat and humidity. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's nice. Nice. I was doing just the opposite, Vivica. I was in Chicago freezing. <laughs> Chicago's cold already? Oh, right. child was like in the 50s and 60s. It was it was off the chain. I was devastated and it was raining. But I had to perform for Mother's Day. So I had a performance and then I um went out to dinner with my cousins, a whole bunch of cousins, and then I had to go to the studio. So I'm working on small amounts of sleep, but I'm preparing for this tour that's coming up at the city winery that kicks off in June in Atlanta, June 8th, 9th. So Everybody get your tickets, go to my bio, go to my page um, to look at all the dates to see if your city's there. But that's what I've been preparing on the low rehearsals and trying to put set lists together. And, you know, so but it's always good to go back home, even just for a little bit of minute. Shot town. OK, Shot, the, right, food, first right. of all, the food is what time it is. So. How was your yeah. weekend, Lisa Ray? Um, a little bleak because it's my first Mother's Day without my mom. Mm-hmm. So my phone just kept going off with Happy Mother's Day. And I was like, nope, not feeling it. You know, and then I was like, okay, okay, let me let me try to switch this. And I traveled I'm in Italy doing a film called Lunar Lockdown, a sci-fi movie. So I am also Ooh. working on Little Sleep to None. So I'm going to sleep <laughs> out until 2 o'clock in the morning here. The Queen's on Claudia. Uh, I was in five cities in in, in seven days. I went to Atlanta to do two episodes of my podcast. Then I went to New York to do two days on the Breakfast Club, guest hosting again. I'm in the running for that. Then I took a train to Providence, spent time with my mom. Then I went to Boston and went to the Boston Celtics, uh, Philadelphia 76ers, game seven with my brother, his sister, his wife. She has a suite, like she's a big time baller over there, okay? She's like a CEO. And then I flew back today and I was stuck at the airport for four and a half hours with delays. So I'm ready to have this drink with y'all. Okay, mm. salute <laughs> to the queens being booked, busy, and blessed. Okay. But still giving y'all looks on this Monday night. We still giving y'all looks. <laughs> Soon as we're done, I got a pot roast cooking in the uh, in the slow cooker. I cut it up. It's like beef stew. It's comfort food. I'm going to eat that and go to sleep. Good for All you. Right. Good for you. Can I say your hair looks especially fabulous tonight for being <laughs> travel weary? <laughs> Thank you. I, I got some... Some sew-ins, it's like half, it's, my hair's out, but it's like some clips. I mean, yeah. sewn in, some tracks. So thank you. you. Always get really good weaves to me, Claudia. I love uh, you. Thank you. I, the trick is leaving some of your, a lot of your real hair yeah. out. So you have the hairline looking natural. Cause I don't like when it looks crazy like that. You know, when it's like, it's like a barbie. Uh, it like look that. like a lace front. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you can see, see the hairline. Gotta give a hairline. All right. But thank you, you ladies. Can. Everybody looks beautiful. Oh, what, what are we drinking tonight? Did I ask y'all? I, I'm. You, you said our, we, we saluted. So, yes, we're having All drinks. Right, let's, let's get to the topics. Let's, because we got two fabulous guests today, so let's get to it. All right, y'all, there's a new couple in town. According to TMZ, Megan Good and Jonathan Majors are allegedly dating. The dynamic duo was recently spotted catching a movie at the Alamo Draft House in Los Angeles last weekend. Did you catch, did this catch you by surprise? Vivica, let's go to you first. Absolutely caught me by surprise. I was like, Megan. You done went from the preacher to the actor. Um, Extraordinaire. (laughs) You know know, that everybody's talking about. Um, You know, uh, she's allowed to date and and, and have fun. And before all the drama dropped, uh, jumped off in Jonathan's life, unfortunately, you know, he was the the hottest kid on the block. Y'all remember him on the cover of Ebony Magazine with them roses and them thighs? Okay. Well, just like right. so, alone. you know, can't say I'm mad at her, um, but you know, let's let's just hope it's not a a, a stunt. But if she, they want to date and have a good time, why not? Okay, Selena. You know, I'm I'm gonna agree with Vivica on this, and I I bet too that they might have even been dating. You know, how people be dating on the low, and you just don't know about Ooh. it. 
they might have been dating during the Cole Creed situation. You know, this might have been going on for a long time and they just haven't, which could have probably contributed to the argument, child. So we don't oh, know. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute, Serena. Why was I just going to say that? I was like, maybe that was the text that I'm set it off. But even still, I, I agree with you, Vivica. She is allowed to date and you, you can't control who you like. You know what I'm saying? They're all in the same spaces. You know, I'm sure you guys are, you know, actors and actresses, just like entertainers. We're all in the same spaces. So, you know, it's it's not uncommon to date, obviously, to date people that are in, that are in your line of work. I mean, he fan. Uh, the only reason why we're even having this conversation is because he's going through this legal drama and this foolishness. But had that not been the case, I mean, and we don't even know if he's guilty. Like, he's not guilty until he's proven guilty. So, you know, had that not been the case, we'd be like, okay, girl, go on, girl. Nobody would be saying nothing. So, I don't know. Go on, girl. Do your thing. Lisa Ray, what do you think? And that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, you know, she had a very public marriage and she held it down. We were even shocked when, you know, when we heard about that relationship. We were like, oh, she that much into the Bible? She's going to be a first lady? Oh, what? And now... It's over to the bad boy, you know, but she's young. She's a black Barbie doll. She's working. She's successful. She's a god fearing woman. She's a friend. I am here for it. whatever it is that she's going to do to make her happy. And we don't even know if they dating or not. Hopefully they were going to check out a film to do some research because they're going to work together. Who knows? I love Megan Good. I think she's always been so pleasant. Every time I see her, she's gorgeous in person, yeah. just as gorgeous in person as she is in the pictures. You know, some people we see uh, the movie Magic makes them look stunning. She's mm -hmm. stunning in person. She's a stunning and kind woman. And I'm going to go ahead and trust our good sis, Megan Good. If she sees something in him, then maybe there's something about him that we don't know that she sees. Or like Lisa Ray said, they could simply be going to the movies because you know, in our line of work, you stand next to someone that's famous. They say you dating or you having sex with them. Right. Girl, and you right. might have just been yeah. talking to them. Y'all might have a mutual friend. Y'all might be like, remember when we went to that one project audition and they catch you in that moment? And they think you whispering something sexy in someone's ear. They always do that. All so until, okay. until she says we dating, we don't know that we don't know nothing. Allegedly. I'm just happy he with a black woman. That's all. <laughs> you know that was word on the street. Now you're <laughs> black. So <laughs> Okay. Oh, they like, oh, now you ready for the sisters. I mean, how can you try, uh, no matter what color Megan is, she is fine. So fine. exactly she's fine. And she's sweet. You're right, Claudia. She's she so is. Nice. I need Megan to help uh Jonathan with his poses though, because he always looks confused or he got caught by the <laughs> and all the people always like I don't know. <laughs> he does do the pucker poo lips. Poor thing. Well, she'll help him out. She takes great pictures, so. She does. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, he's very talented, and, and we hope he gets through this unfortunate incident. That's right. I hope it's a lie. Yeah. All right. In sports news, John Morant has been suspended once again from the Memphis Grizzlies after he was caught flashing a gun on Instagram Live. So stupid. Now, this is the second time he's been caught waving a gun on social media. What are your thoughts on his behavior? Vivica, let's go to you first. You know, I'm a sports junkie. I am. I love my sports. I love my athletes. But at first I thought it, when it came out, I said, wow, they're a little late suspending him from that incident that happened like two, three months ago. And then you know how you kind of look in the corner like, oh, when did this happen? And it was like two hours ago. Then the other, I went to another headline 10 hours ago. I said, you got to be kidding me. Okay. Now, didn't you just get on the little interview with Jalen Rose talking about it wasn't my gun. You know, I'm in counseling, this and the third. Now, once again, you was on live. I, I don't know why. Where y'all going? Riding around in cars, on live, flashing guns. For what reason do you have any idea the blessings that you have been given, young man? You have a $149 million contract that you are seemingly trying to flush down the toilet, a co-career. You cannot keep on thinking you're going to get away with this behavior in the NBA. You are under a microscope at all times. And the fact that it happened so quickly again, that was the most disappointing thing to me. If you're going to talk about it, be about it. Ja, grow up. 
Really, you need to grow up, young man. You have been blessed. You have practiced. You have made sacrifices. You about to blow this. Facts. Lisa Ray, what do you think? I think this is a prime example of how they used to give media training. I think that they need to go back to training our, our, our people so they know how to act, what's expected, how they walk in being an example, how to know that everybody and all eyes are, are on you, you know? And in that contract, if you have not read that small print, they can hold you accountable for all the things that you do because now you are going to be representing some other company on the franchise of the NBA. And it's not cool. It is very dumb, very immature. And I hope that they do something about it more than just taking a, a doing a fine because, you know, when you had that much money, that fine ain't really too much of nothing. I agree with you, Lisa Ray. Just to piggyback that really quick, because he just lost like $250,000. He makes oh, wait, wait a minute then. Girl, oh, right. He, I, I, it might have been, been even more than that, to be honest with you. He makes like $125,000 a game, and they suspended him for eight. So, excuse me, that was more. So, um, I, I, I don't get, like you said, and that meant nothing, that it's been less than a couple of months, and he's doing it again. Selena, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, obviously, we're all on a one accord, but I have two concerns. I mean, it's Mental, mental Health Awareness Month. Yes. What, what's T? Um, something else is the, the elevator is not going all the way up. Something is, is breaking down at the infrastructure of who he is as a person, because to do the exact same thing again, there's something mentally wrong. I don't know if you're having anxiety attacks. I don't know if you're depressed. I'm, I'm not sure because also too, can somebody explain to me? Cause maybe I'm just old school. What, why is it sharp to hold a gun up anyway? Is there some kind of is there some kind of what is why does that make that shot? Like, why is having a gun up, especially in a climate where there are mass shootings and we're at a high of mass shootings like never before? Why do you think that's good? And being a black man with young fans, like we've already said this to you before. You're sitting up there like you was in a Gail King R. Kelly interview, sitting up there with Jalen, and you didn't learn anything. Also, your friends. Who are these friends? Right. Birds of a feather flock together. Because why would they do, why would they pick up their phone and start filming you after everything that you just went through? Like, I'm just, there are a lot of things that, and then where's your father, Usher, that be sitting on the sideline arguing with Shannon Sharp? Why he not arguing with you up top? Because okay. again, attitude reflects leadership. So I why think... hasn't he talked to you and, and gotten into you? Like, it's just a lot of unanswered questions. Like the obvious is you're, you're, you're playing with fire, but what, something else has to be going on, guys. I just can't sit here and think that this just, you just being stupid. You I mean, we can't know that if this guy the pump for him or not. So we, we, we that, you know, we can't really say That's that. That's why I'm asking, where's dad? Where's a lot, dad? Let me jump in here, you guys. A lot of these okay. young people are just stupid. He's stupid. You have been blessed. One out of 500,000 high school athletes make it to the league. And okay. you're one of them. And the NBA have been trying to make you one of the faces of the NBA. Okay. And you, I, you're the only Negro I see getting trying to get out of the NBA when everybody's trying to get in it. I hate when people are talented and defeat the odds and, get, and do stupid shit. Now, I will say this. There are some states, and I don't know what state he was in when he did this, where, where gun ownership is legal and it's fine. But you are representing the NBA, and they already spoke to you about it already. This is a national, this is a very wholesome brand, right? But they don't want you to do all that. So if my coach or producers of, of, of Cocktails of Queens says, hey, Claudia, we prefer for you to not smoke weed on camera, even though it's legal in your state, then guess what? If I want to keep my contract, I'm going to do it. And as soon as we click off and I hit the button, get leave the chat or leave the Zoom, I can go hit it. I think, correct. So, so, what, so what are you doing? Do you not want this? Claudia, <laughs> I'm saying, do you can not want this? You don't want this $200 million. Shannon Sharp says the best apology is change behavior. You make $40 million a year, and yep. you want to live like that. Rappers, athletes want to be rappers and live the bad boy life, and the rappers want to be athletes, and you that shows up at any celebrity basketball game. They'd be struggling hard. Can I say one last thing in closing? We have to stop blaming his friends. Yeah. Because I think that that's what everyone's doing. What Them ain't your friends. You ain't hanging around the right people or blaming his father. Accountability. Is a beautiful thing. And that's that's all I want to say. So uh -huh. that's how you grow as a person is you accept responsibility for your own actions. This was dumb as hell.
I feel you, but he's so young, Vivica. You know what I'm saying? That he's too impressionable. That's something we can make decisions on our own. But when you're in a coven of foolishness, it makes it a little hard. I just, I just and when you have to back it up, it's like, oh, it's his only he's he's to protect him. That's all of it. It's I all of it. My friends did not tell me. And right. ruin everything, even if I'm having a dumb blind moment, I want them to go, hey, hey, hey. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I and need the people around. No, 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 but I'm saying in general, they're blaming his friends. Right. If your friends are putting everybody, picked up the gun. Everybody, him, yeah. he's number one, but it's yes. all of the components. The service. Haven't y'all all had to tell friends, don't post that picture of me or don't post that. Oh, video. absolutely. Yeah. Right. But then they should say, girl, don't post that. That look a fool. Exactly. All right. You know, I'm sure we'll be talking about him again because it seems like he's not learning his lesson. We hope you do, brother, because although we hard on you, we are coming from a place of love. We want you to do better. It's not hate. We want you to do better. We really do. All right. Coming up next, speaking of doing better, we are catching up with an amazingly talented queen. Michelle Williams is here. Keep it locked. Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Tonight, we are normalizing the conversation of mental health with Grammy Award winning singer, actress, author, and host of Checking In with Michelle Williams podcast. Please give it up for our beautiful, fabulous, talented, I can't even say enough adjectives, the queen, Michelle Williams. <laughs> it is <laughs> Hey, it is, hey, hey, hey to all you beautiful, amazing queens. Uh, How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. I feel oh, really good. I love it. So let's jump into it then. Yeah. Why do you feel it's important for us to normalize conversations surrounding mental health? Um, it's important to normalize it so that um, when you ask somebody how they're really doing, you know, maybe they'll be more inclined to say, you know, I'm I'm all right, but man, I've been having a few hard days, mm. you know, versus just kind of sweeping things under the rug and to lessen the shame of someone who might be feeling depressed or having an anxious day. Mm. Well, let me say this, because that segues right into my question. Mm. Michelle. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be getting nervous now, every time someone says it's the lead. Girl, part. me too. I, I, feel like, I just tag on to it. <laughs> I, I, look, I do too now. Okay. But it's about you. And, I, and, and, and what I love about this is that you've been very transparent about your battle with depression. Because, you know, oftentimes people think depression is just in the bed, hungover, and just can't get up. But when we see you, and we see you smiling, we see you at church, we see you singing, there's no way she could possibly be depressed. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, uh-huh. And you mentioned that it stemmed from the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that you needed to address your battle with depression? And how are you managing it now? Oh, whew. well, first off, um, again, thank y'all so much for having me um, here for this in important discussion. Um, I did not get a diagnosis of depression until I was in my thirties. Um, mm. So by that point, I was irritable, not able to seemingly appreciate um, great moments. And um, somewhere in my twenties, um, I felt like I was depressed. Um, uh, now, when I say this, I, I do not want anybody to take this and run with it because I've already had a conversation um, with uh, Destiny Child's manager, but I remember he was the first person I went to that said, hey, I, I think I'm depressed. And he's like, no, there's no way you can be depressed. Y'all just signed an amazing deal. You're about to go on tour. You have dolls that are coming out. And so I said, okay, you're right. Maybe I'm not depressed. Maybe I'm just homesick or just missing my granny's good Southern food. I, you know, I don't know. Um, but then fast forward to 2017, he told me, he said, Michelle, had I knew then what I know now about depression, he said, I definitely would have gotten you the help you need. So people probably still say that today, like uh, Lisa, Vivica, Claudia, Selena, there's no way you can be having a down day. Y'all have this amazing show. You guys are producing movies and just killing it, killing the game. There's no way, you know, but if there's some stuff that maybe you haven't dealt with from childhood or even recent shenanigans that have just broken your heart, betrayal, disappointment, abandonment, untreated, any type of emotional pain, some of it can turn into depression. 
Absolutely. And I, and I, first of all, let me just commend you for, for, you know, being an advocate for this because especially in our community, because we shy away from this, even though it's still, it's, it's starting to become more accepted. We still shy away from it. And it's because of, you know, entertainers and figures like yourself um, that keep it in the light and, and it's going to evoke more healing. Um, I saw you on, you know, during a recent engagement, but I saw it online, the conversation you had at City First Church. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one of the things that you said that was so powerful that I actually have not heard anyone say, and, you know, I've, I've talked to, I have a therapist I see once a week, you know, we talk about trauma and anxiety and all kinds of stuff, but you said you thought that success would heal your trauma. Mm -hmm. Can you please speak to that more, like elaborate on that because- you know, like you said, we're all people think we just up here popping, like we just doing it. And and we as as entertainers can get into that mindset as well. You know, like your your manager said, oh no, 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 you got dolls coming out, you to sign the deal. Success, that's gonna fix that. So can you talk to us about you know your experience with that and how did you decide when it was time to turn a corner, you know, and how to, and that it was time to fix this? So good. All of us have it made up in our minds what success looks like up to us. Sometimes success just means I got all the kids out to school on time. <laughs> you know, that's success. that's success. So I don't want anybody. Right. Come on. So I, I don't want anyone to just success to equate success only with money, fame, and you know, all that stuff. Because at that time, a, as a child, I remember saying there's gotta be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than dysfunction and toxicity and uh, just all kinds of things um, that I was privy to and, and things that I was witnessing. And I just remember saying, oh, I can't wait because when I get old enough, I'm going to college. Selena, me and you went to the same university. Oh, down to the Illinois State. <laughs> okay. So I was down there like, I'm going to go. I'm going to be a forensic psychologist or amazing prosecuting attorney. I'm going to make my money. And y'all not going to see me no more. Goodbye. Right. No. Uh, the, the thing that success or the finances can do, though, um, it can give you the resources you need to get help. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you ever feel led to pay it forward to someone that you might feel that's in need. Uh, so I, I would say success maybe might highlight someone's dysfunction or their trauma. It might highlight who they really are. Because when you give someone leadership and power or whatnot, who they really are comes out. And sometimes who we really are is a wounded little girl, a yes, wounded little boy, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was time out for me to stop making excuses when certain relationships, you know, would not work out. So I couldn't say, I don't want to be 50 years old saying, well, you know, the reason why I went off on you is because of trauma. No, no, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> because it's still hurting someone. Mm. Go get some therapy. Go yeah. uproot that stuff, which, by the way, is not your fault that someone hurt you, that someone abandoned you, that someone abused you. That is not your fault. Right. But how you choose to respond to people who have nothing to do with your pain, that's on you. Okay. Michelle, I, I love that someone who's as huge of a star as yourself, and we do see you as a success story. I mean, you are. It's, you're a bona fide successful, one of the most successful women in the, in the world, actually. Right. And the people from the outside looking in often look at women like you and the rest of the women on the panel as, well, you have this, you have that, you're beautiful, you're talented. And they think that's the fix to everything. You know, just like with life. Oh, when I get in this relationship, I'll be happy. When I get this job, I'll be happy. So kudos to you for doing that, because a lot of times they don't realize you can have pockets that are fat and a heart that is empty or broken. Yes. And, and, and that's the saddest thing in the world. I just made that up, Bars. OK, that's one of the saddest <laughs> things in the world, because. It's like, you feel like, am I being ungrateful to God because I've been blessed, but I'm still sad. I yeah. still don't have this. And, and, and that goes to show that we are more the same than different, no matter what levels of success we are. So the, and I'm saying that for the soulmates in the chat that are watching this, because they think, oh, I, I think that's a, the justification a lot of times for people to be critical of celebrities or beautiful women or rich people. Well, you got this. You can have that, and some of the people that are so successful we've all seen are some of the most sad and depressed people in the world because 
they're overachieving to take away from dealing with their issues. So I just, I know that was a long, I don't like to do the super long question, comment before a question, but just, I want to give you a props because that is not, you know, it's, 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 you're making yourself vulnerable and it, to be open like that. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you. I just want to say, oh, my cat want to get in the mix. Okay. Well, let right. me go ahead and get back to the script, Michelle. Um, I love it. <laughs> um, let's talk about your podcast, checking in with Michelle Williams. In a recent episode, you told your listeners that you are responsible for your healing. Tell us about that. Again, you know, yes, we want to hold people accountable or we would think, say, the person that might have hurt us, cheated, betrayed, stole from us, abused us. You would think, you know, you're going to get that apology. You think they're going to have this come to Jesus moment. I acknowledge what I did to you, Michelle. I acknowledge what I did to you, Lisa, Biblical, Claudia. So like, if you're waiting on that, you might be waiting a long time. Some people may, especially if they're on their own healing journey, and let them let them come to you uh, with that apology, with that repentance. But some people, y'all, they don't even know they hurt you. They mm -hmm. literally have moved on with their life. They're married with their kids. They, sometimes they don't even know, but here you are holding on to some pain that... Somebody, because maybe you didn't have, maybe you weren't even empowered to confront them uh, when it happened, when it occurred. But nine times out of 10, people have moved on, you know, with their life. So if you're waiting on someone to come back to you, they probably are not. And it's amazing for you to be on your own healing journey so that when they do come to you, you ain't be like, all right, whatever. You can be like, you can be like, you know what? Thank you so much. I am so thankful um, that that just really uh, gives me some closure. Now, restoration of a relationship is not the same as reconciliation of a relationship. Reconciling means, okay, we can agree. You did some jacked up stuff, right? You, you did. That's it. Restoring means, okay, we're going to go to brunch again. I've had some relationships where I accept your apology. We're not hanging out no more. Okay. That's just a boundary that you're just unsafe, but thank you for your apology. And then there are some people who are really like repentful. They're acknowledging and some, you'll know, uh, ladies, you'll know like, yeah, I can let this person back in because I see the fruit of the work that they've been doing in their own life. Amen. Right. You know, yeah. Michelle, any advice that you can yeah. give to our soulmates who may, you know, be experiencing battles with their mental health right now? Mm -hmm. uh, it does not have to overtake you. Mm. You can definitely win. I heard someone say, don't use the word problem anymore. Use mm. the word possibilities. I use that. the word possibilities. Because I think for me, I'm not ignoring what happened to me. I'm not ignoring anything but i just refuse to let it just have a foothold over me for the rest of my life yes i've been in so much counseling and so many retreats there are times one time me and my therapist we talked about crawfish the whole hour because i didn't have nothing to talk about <laughs> i'm so good in my journey you know but now it's proactive instead of reactive because i used to only go to therapy to tell on people oh <laughs> But now it's literally, okay, what, have I, what am I doing in my journey that I inflicted pain on somebody that mm -hmm. I need to get right? I love you know? it. And then, and then vice versa. So I would just tell anybody, I promise you, it's hard work. It is not easy to confront pain mm -hmm. because a lot of us, we work hard to ignore the pain. We go into relationship after relationship because we feel like it's going to make us feel better. Or me, I go to car dealerships. The, Cars don't. Uh, uh, my mama knew. She said, "Who broke your heart?" Okay, <laughs> I love it. So tell us, what can fans expect from you next, Queen? You know what? I, I feel so good in my purpose. Sometimes brokenness can kind of give you more of a good view on what purpose is. You know, because brokenness can also humble you when you think you're you're going good. Sometimes God can redirect you to tell you, you know, this is the season where you're going to make impact in the world 
through words in a different way, not just through music, but through the conversations, yes. uh, through your books and through the podcast. So it is a joy when I wake up in the morning and put two feet on these floors. Um, even today, I was excited um, to be having this conversation with y'all because it is purpose. Michelle in the chat, I just want to tell you real quick, you're getting so much love in the chat. Otoro Fonzarelli says, I needed to hear this tonight. Makisha says, thank you, Michelle, for sharing all of this. I mean, they're just going on and on and on about Michelle. Arnold Norfleet, Michelle dropping some testimony gems. Like, I, If you can rewatch the show tomorrow, you can see all the comments. They are giving you so much love, and I think you would appreciate, I think you would love to see what they're saying. They are feeling- oh, okay. can, I give, can I give two or three resources for people? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, therapy for black girls, mm -hmm. black female therapist, and then psychologytoday.com. If you're kind of curious, mental wealth alliance, right? Because some people are like, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this therapy thing. I promise you, fellas, yes. you're gonna be so attractive. You're gonna be like, yo, she can't stay off me, or your partner's gonna be like, something's <laughs> different about you. Okay. And then, and then where can we catch your podcast? It is on the Black Effect Podcast Network um, through iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I love it. I love it. Soulmates, if you are feeling overwhelmed or you just need someone to talk to, contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. Michelle, we thank you so much for being with us, Queen. You know we love you. Mm, we love from you the so bottom much. of my heart. Continue Where's success. All right, all right Queen. You. Coming up next is going to be Queendom. And later in the show, we have another Grammy Award winning artist, Miss Macy Gray. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. All right, everyone, we've reached the part of the show where we talk about our relationships, the challenges we have faced in our lives, and how we overcame them. Welcome to our queendom. Tonight's topic will focus on mental health awareness amongst Black women, which is very on target for what we've already been talking about. Historically, Black women have often felt disrespected unprotected and neglected, which have caused their mental health to look different from other symptoms of mental illness that exist. And according to a study from New York University, Black women more frequently report symptoms of depression, such as sleep disturbance, self-criticism, and irritability, as opposed to stereotypical symptoms like depressed mood, which can lead to underdiagnosis and undertreatment. Ladies, Oh my God, just coming out of Michelle Williams, you know, segment and then going into this. What are your thoughts on this study and how can we better manage our mental health, ladies? I mean, I know that you all are challenged all the time. Lisa Ray, um, let's start with you. What are your thoughts um, on, on all of this? The fact that I'm hearing the phrase mental illness so much now is making me aware. Hmm. It's making me pay attention to not just only everyone else that's admitting to having a mental illness, but checking me to say, hey, you kind of low. How low are you? Do you feel like you need to talk to someone? Do you feel you need a rebuttal? Do you think that just venting is going to help? Are you looking for solution because you need solution solving? What does that look like? Because the transparency of what Michelle just told us about here it is. She's one, she's part of one of the biggest groups in the world here, Destiny's Child. And we thinking that the way she's smiling and looking, and we know she a praying sister, it's like she could possibly be depressed, but she said, no, absolutely. This is what depressed look like. And so when you don't want to, to recognize that's where you are, that's when you do need that accountability friend to be able to say to you, hey, I'm, I'm a little concerned about you. And I, I want you to be able to be better than what you are and where you are. I think it's wonderful. I love the fact that we're taking not just this month, but we've been talking about it, like you said, Selena, for quite some time. Absolutely. Claudia, what are your thoughts? You know, I always say that Black women, we need to burn that cape that we voluntarily put on. That I'm a strong Black woman. I got this. No, we don't got it. And it's okay. okay. Let your friends hold you up. 
Let your friends be people that you confide in, that you can tell them, I don't feel good. I, something's off with me. Because a lot of times we bottle up inside in the interest of this thing that we're, I don't know why we put that on ourselves, so much pressure to be this strong person. Because people hear us and say, oh, she good, she got it. She don't need nothing. She don't need no help. And we end up falling deeper into a depression because we're like, why is nobody helping us? And then it comes up as we're bitchy. We got an attitude. We're angry. We're bitter. Really, we're just misunderstood or we don't feel protected. And we don't feel able to be soft. So I, I, I burnt, ladies, if we can all just burn that imaginary cape that we put on ourselves, because the study says it doesn't show up the same way, right? So right. people people aren't really, they don't really give us that grace. Like, oh, she must be depressed. They think she's just being a typical angry, black, bitter bitch. No, we don't know how to properly communicate it or we, we, we haven't felt comfortable to be vulnerable. Because in our community, when you're vulnerable, and that goes for our men and our women, we label you, what do we do? You soft, you weak, you a punk ass all that kind of stuff. And we need to stop that because people are really out here on the verge of, of snapping because they feel that like they can't show vulnerability. And, and yeah, I think so we need to stop. And they are so mm -hmm. Vivica, what do you think? I concur with the ladies. And the main thing that I just uh, want to say is that it's about time. It's about time that we have these conversations and, and feel like, you know, even at the height of our success, that we care enough to have the community um, be able to talk to us about it, be able to write in questions about it, be able to guide them to get help. So it's about time. And of course, I agree with all of you ladies. Um, and, you know, I just want to offer some some tips, maybe, you know, um, first of all, I just want to say an affirmation and, you know, that maybe we should all adapt to from time to time. Sometimes you might need to just look in the mirror and say over and over again, it's okay to not be okay. It's yeah. okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. And once you understand that you're not okay, then you can start doing things to help you be okay. You know, like putting more self-care, you know, creating more self-care into your schedule. And I know that's a big, a hard thing for, you know, women who are really busy. So you know how you have a to-do list of things that you have to do? Create a to-do list of things that you need to do for yourself, for self-care, a list of massage, a list of seeing a therapist, you know, a list of, you know, self-time, meditation, start creating lists for things that are specifically for you and your mental well-being. Taking up yoga, working out creates natural endorphins, makes you feel better instantly. Um, and doing some more research, like those things that, um, those entities that Michelle Williams mentioned, looking into those things and really doing some research and trying to heal, trying to take the steps to heal and become better because it's going to have to happen individually for us to be able to do it collectively. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I am glad that we're having this conversation. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. You know, the queens are always on it, honey. You know, we're going we gonna to tackle all the issues every month, okay? <laughs> so, you know, hey, all I can say is, is be well and be informed. But yes. coming up next... We are talking to a more and an even more informed black amazing woman, Miss Macy Gray. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. Tonight we have another Grammy Award winning queen who captured the hearts of fans around the world for decades with her universal, appealing, soulful voice and unique style. But first, let's take a look at her moves from her new single, Every Night. Love it. Yes, that's right. Please give it up for Macy Gray. Wow. Macy, Macy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Woot, woot. Macy. <laughs> you, you are freeing. You have such a freeing spirit and your voice is just so unique, girl. I'm thinking I'm going to hear you on some type of animation sometime soon. Mm -hmm. A unique vibe has touched so many uh, people and fans all over the world. So what is the key to being carefree in today's climate? Oh, I, I mean, people tell me that I'm that, but it's not like I try to be that. So I, I, don't, I don't really know. Like, I think um, I, I, I was, uh, you know, I don't really know how to, how to be anything else, you know, 
Um, yep. I've tried. I'm not gonna pretend like I've never been fake because I have. I'm like, <laughs> been a whole like, uh, you know, because I live in LA, so you have to have your your bullshit game has to be tight. <laughs> so I've, I've tried, but you know, I always end up right right back here. <laughs> you know, it's a big circle. You know, I I understand what you're saying because <laughs> LA LA will make you be like. Yes, let's do lunch. And then you're like, I know I'm totally bullshitting this person. I'm never trying to see this person again. Let me hug the bitch I can't stand. But anyway, um, I love how unique you are. And I actually, I I love seeing you on my screen as an actress. Like you are dope. And uh, we can all agree that having a carefree spirit can lead to trolls, creating false narratives about you. I'm sure that's something that you can't stand to deal with. Um, But what do you think is the biggest misconception that, that people have about you? Oh, so many things. Like, um, recently I was called a transphobe. Then I was, uh, I died a couple times. I've been dead, I think, twice. Um, I've heard that one. Yeah, I've had, you know, all kinds. I mean, I could go. I've been doing this a while. So I've, there's a lot of them. But uh, I don't, you know, I stopped reading the papers, you know, because, uh, and so, you know, one thing about the whole, that whole fake news era that they started in 2020, is it was actually true that most news is fake. You know? So now it's, it's actually comforting just to like watch social media and they say like uh, a pig jumped over a mountain and you can enjoy it because it's just as real as, as all the other stuff they're talking about, you know what I mean? So it kind of simplifies everything. When you don't believe anything that you read, <laughs> Exactly. I really you know you get facts. Yes. Uh, Macy, you and I, we go um, way back. Way back. Uh, we, we we did a show, Missing Together, where I got to see your talents as, as an actress. Um, we always run into each other, and I'm just always so happy to see you evolving. All the time. Especially when it comes to your music. Um, now, currently, you have an al- a new album out called The Reset. Tell us about this new hit. But can I tell you, Vivica, everybody met you back in the day with uh, Francesca. Remember Frankie? <laughs> That's how far I go. Remember that? Yes. $200,000 by hand for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can I tell you something, Macy? Right. They hit me every week with somebody new trying to do a meme or something with it. They all like, say, Vivica, what you think? Baby, it's been done. That's what I think. But that's why. That's the best one ever, though. Because yeah. nobody knew that counting money was hard till you said it. <laughs> Everybody oh. was like, oh, is that hard to do? Count $200. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And we, we were always wondering why she counted it in the bank with machine. That's <laughs> my part. She was old school. Yeah, yeah. Though, for some reason. Yes. Yeah, so no about it. this new album. My album is uh, it's called The Reset. It's on My House is Hot. It's called The Reset, and uh, we made it during COVID. Hmm. So one thing that we all had in common during COVID, everybody was uh, emoting. Everybody had emotions. Everybody had opinions. Everybody was had questions, you know. So as crazy as the time as it was, it was a, a great time if you were an artist because you got you had so much inspiration, you know. There was so much to talk about and write about, especially if you have a podcast. There was a million things to talk about so it was a good time to be an artist it was a great time to make an album and and we made an album and and all that emotion is on there all that uh content about what was going on and 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 it was it worked out because it, it we found out that it was uh still relevant today it was relevant 10 years ago you know what i mean we had issues 10 years ago we had issues 20 years ago so i i, I sense a touch of gospel in there gospel well, I did. I was one of those, you know, I had to go to church twice a week with my mom and my grandma. So probably, you know. Okay. I did. I heard it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the opening track on your album. It's called PTSD, which is crazy because you're right. We were all inspired by, you know, the mental awareness, the mental health that was all going on. I even have a song on my album called PTSD. But let's take a listen to your opening of PTSD on your album. Okay.
my God today, is there another world for me? Hello, somebody. Is anybody there? Macy, first of all, I just love the, the rawness of your, vo your, of your voice. It's Thank so you. dope to me. I just, I absolutely love your voice. Thank you. Tell us about Thank the inspiration you, by the behind PTSD. Uh, that was, it was just, um, like I said, I think, I think what happened was they put the whole world on our shoulders. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we're the ones that had to stay home. We're the ones that had to be safe. We, you know what I mean? We're the ones that had to figure out how to, uh, operate without a, when our jobs were gone and, and, and money was, was running out. You know what I mean? And all the plans that we had got canceled, we had to figure it out. You know, then we had to go out and vote for them, you know? <laughs> then we had to figure out how to get around police shooting. So it was, uh, it's just like, I, I just think the, the this country in particular is, is so traumatizing. You know, they, they put so much on us and they, and they pretend that they they have our back and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. But it's really, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's, it's our country and so, I just, I just felt so traumatized by all that. It, it actually changed me that, that whole, that couple of years, you know, and, and I see the world differently. Absolutely. Well, you know what, Macy, I'm glad that you put it all on wax because we missed you and I miss you also as an actress as well. So tell our soulmates what to expect from you next. Uh, next, I'm doing, I'm doing a movie uh, called Turnbuckle. And uh, I just got offered to host the show. What do you guys think? Yes. Wow. 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 Is, it a, is it a music show? No, they were like, we want Miss Gray to host this, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even read it because no one's ever asked me to host anything. I got so excited. Oh, to get go for it. Out. You should go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I think you because you're very comfortable where you are. Like, you know what you're doing. You got this. I don't know if I could, I could do oh, that. Oh, sure you can. You're, you're unique and you're fearless. And I think those are the two things you need to be a good host. So I think you already got it. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. Just make sure that we get. Calling too. You sometimes, you know, you gotta. God might be trying to elevate you to another level yes. because of what we've gone through and what you've written in your records. So, you know, we've been singing stuff for all these years. It's time to just talk to the people. <laughs> I'll add this to your resume, and we're gonna look out for you soon because we definitely appreciate you coming here and sharing some jewels with us and letting us hear your first track firsthand. So, thank you so very much. Thank you. Wow. So wow. Pastor Pearl James gets candid about an abortion request. Ooh, find out why when we return. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Ladies, real quick, I just have to address the chat. We have uh, quite a few people watching the show, and we only have 433 likes. We gave you Grammy winners, okay? We gave you Macy Gray, Michelle Williams, an awesome queendom. We're giving all this glam. Can y'all just hit that like button for us real quick? Come on now, come on. You don't ask much. Just hit that like button real quick. All right, y'all. In a recent interview on the Tamron Hall Show, Cheryl Jane from the hit group Salt and Pepper revealed that she was asked to have an abortion in order to save her career. Uh, what are your thoughts? And have you ladies ever been asked to do something drastic in order to save your career, Lisa Ray, let's go to you first. What do you think about this? I have I have not been asked to do anything, um, anything, you know, to save my career. Uh, I think that's a shame. But you know, you know how men are, you know, and when you get in a sticky situation, they think that that's the thing to do. And I, I mean, I can understand it because it's almost like you're young and you, you know, it was a mistake, and you're feeling like this is going to be proper or the best way. But you know, I think this to stay with the ladies, let them make a choice. That's right, Vivica. I agree with Lisa Ray 100% that that is absolutely a woman's choice, what she wants to do with her body. But, you know, evidently she's still traumatized uh, that that stayed with her. So, um, oh. and back then it might have been a different time. So I don't know if it was the, at the beginning of the group or what it was, but that's like, I, I agree with Lisa Ray. It's unfortunate, but a woman should always have the right to do with her body as she chooses. Selena. Well, I'm just going to keep it 100. I mean, I was in an actual predicament where that actually happened to me. I wasn't pressured um, per se by a specific person, but just the 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 nature of the business, being a woman and, um, you know, thinking that being pregnant was going to destroy my career. So I was in a predicament where I did go through with having an abortion. 
Um, and I went through, you know, a lot of mental anguish afterwards. Um, I promised to God I would never do it again. He blessed me with two beautiful children after that. But the person at the label that I talked to actually did pay for it and everything. Um, so I have gone through that. I know what that does and I know what that is. And it is going on um, in our industry. I would be sitting here lying to you if I told you that it does not go on, but it does. Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm sorry that you were pressured into that or that they thought that that, you know, that would stand in the way because it, it is different times now. Back then, I think people, even just a few years ago, thought it was such a negative, oh, it's going to ruin your sex appeal, which now women are mothers, grandmothers, and still sexy as hell, successful, and got fans. And I just mm -hmm. think it's awful that men will never have to know what that feels like. We definitely run out of time, but we definitely want to talk about the Little Mermaid stuff next week. Definitely, Vivica, I know you really want to get into that. We definitely will. I promise, promise, promise. But okay. special thanks to Michelle Williams and Macy Gray for hanging out with us. Y'all better hit the like button because we give y'all guests. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Black Waterhouse Movies. Catch it on your YouTube channel and website. We'll see y'all next week. And ladies, oh, we have like 20 seconds left. Is there anything you want to say? Lisa, I mean, Vivica, I know you wanted to mention something about that. I want to just... Uh, well, I just want to say to everyone that, you know, hey, get forward. The Little Mermaid is coming out. Get all your little queens together. Get them in their outfits and just enjoy it because it's going to be worth seeing. It's fabulous. All right. Support the film and the actress. We'll see you all next time. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye.